Welcome everyone to Behind the Code. My name is Jerry and this is my brand new YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content here and I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm revamping things so hopefully you guys enjoy the content that I'll be putting together for you. So let's start today's video. Here we go. Hey folks, wanted to give you guys a quick little demo of something that I've been working on. This, what I have here before me is a, um, a Nintendo Partner N64 PC system. This is a development tool, development platform that was used by Nintendo specifically for uh, developing games for the Nintendo 64. And uh, these are pretty rare. Um, a lot of there are they are out there though, and I managed to acquire one. And I've been doing a lot of research in this area on both the Nintendo 64 and the 64 DD, uh, as it's something that caught my interest, and I was really really keen on learning it and diving into learning how to do source code uh, development for it, but not necessarily specifically for developing games. I was interested in the aspects of hardware interfacing to see what could be done with the system. And I'm also actually just going to give you guys a quick little rundown uh, of my process of how I've been using uh, Marshall H's uh, 64 drive flash cart and uh, also just show you some of the source code that I've been doing and the process that I've put together uh, to do that. And I'll just sort of give you a little run through of, uh, of that process and just to show you just for just for the just for a quick little demo. And, uh, and then show you the little uh, program that I've been working on and uh, show it to you running on, on, the, on the N64. Um, and I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to start doing some stuff for the 64DD. I've acquired uh, a development drive as well and uh, a blank uh, development disk. It is blank. <laughs> I know a lot of you are like, whoa, do, you know, slow down, check it first, make sure there's no games on it. But it, uh, I acquired it from an individual who had already had it checked and uh, it is blank but anyhow uh, that's for future development and that's uh, hopefully an area that I can get into and uh, so anyhow without further ado uh, I'm gonna go over some of my code and just show you guys a little demo for the N64 that I've been messing around with so let's uh, go and check that out so the manuals and stuff I've been reading and and in the past I've done stuff like this I've done these little demos that they come out with and I've tried them and been able to get stuff but not understanding them really and that was my real problem was is just all this code was Greek and the, even if getting something like this up on the screen it was like well how is it doing that what's what's going on what, you know how, how is that working so that was my attempt was to dive into this like intense and learn the code and the functions and whatnot and 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 just being be able to script properly for this sucker and uh, do some you know controlled uh, functions and and write some targeted scripts for the specific task that we're trying to accomplish for some parts of the hardware so that was my goal and so I started looking in and, and reading the manuals and going over these demos. Now I don't know how much you've done in the past but I'll just sort of give you a rundown of what I did. So I wanted to learn this. This was the, the task was to learn the code. So I thought okay if I can figure out a way to get a 3D model uh, from a 3D environment, a CAD program and get it displayed on the console and maybe move it around or you know, have some some kind of interaction with it or sound effects and that kind of thing. Then I would be at a point where I'd say, okay, I'm, I'm at the point where I know how to script. Now this program is 3D Studio Max. So I'm not sure you're familiar with that or not, but it's a 3D graphics program and I've used it in the past. I have a background in um, video production and that was an area I was big into sort of in mix with electronics and robotics. So it was a hobby of mine and I was in the business for a while. Um, so I learned how to use 3D Studio Max doing titles and different things. And so I have this basic um, OBJ model that I loaded in here and colored it. And, and so it's just a, a, a three dimensional model, uh, .obj. And so what I thought is like, if I can import this into the code 
and on the 64 and get it moving around then I've accomplished something. So I, I started looking at doing that and, and I found a DOS based program that takes OBJ CAD files and converts them into the format that the N64 requires which is the vertice coordinate data. And so I managed to compile this and got it imported into the uh, into my code and um, started to figure things out that way. So I'll, I'll go over my code with you and um, it's way more complex than I ever imagined but again I'm not a software guy so so others that are software gurus might sit there and say wow this is child's play. But for me I found it to be quite complex and, and a daunting task to learn but um, things are starting to click and I'm, it's making sense so uh, things are, are, are progressing. So my, my overall file is I've got everything crammed into one file and eventually I'll break it up into multiple files but for now I've got it as one. And so there's coordinate data for the screen, uh, color, uh, different color definitions, you got uh, uh, different uh, variable declarations, function declarations. Now here's the coordinate data. These are This is the matrix coordinate information, different segments. Now each segment here um, is a representation of a coordinate for uh, the different vertex points that make up um, a triangle or a square. And so within that there's also color information for that particular uh, square or triangle surface um, and then the color that you want to have applied to it and uh, also the um, there's different coordinates here that you can use for textures as well so now that's what all these different segments are so imagine there's all of these are to make up all of this data here which you can see, which is just, it's quite, a, it's quite significant. That makes up this N64 logo um, within that data, and that's what's required for the N64 to interpret. So that's the coordinate data and all the different positions for all the different points. Um, then I've got different functions that I had to set up for doing uh, um, the vertex uh, uh, setup. Uh, there's different synchronization functions that sort of stabilize things and now each of these GSP1 triangle functions They essentially draw each of one of these segments So of course as you can see there's multiple units and that's just sort of the The actual draw command to implement the the coordinate data into an actual triangle or a square on the screen uh, so there's that, and then I, there's all these different structures. So if you're not familiar with C code at all, I had to learn uh, pointer and uh, uh, pointers and structures and um, point notation essentially for different structures and and uh, the concepts behind pointers um, for controlling different variables. And it was uh, uh, quite a quite a really interesting and learning how to do all that so um, and then there's all this in incorporating all those different uh, um, functions and uh, different uh, um, structures uh, for different uh, variables uh, they're incorporating say for the viewport you've got screen coordinates that are implemented into one structure. You have all the joystick coordinate data that are implemented into one structure. Um, and then of course there's all these separate functions for um, initialization for all the different aspects, whether it's graphics, sound, um, the display list, which is sort of a command list of all the different tasks that you want to have accomplished. Um, and then buffers, uh, figuring and learning all the different buffers they have and, and how to set them up and then clear them if need be, erase their contents, um, and then setting up the different matrices uh, for display um, regarding uh, position. And in the, in the world coordinate system, there's a, a coordinate data within the N64, and that's like world coordinates 
in relation to the model coordinates. So you have to be able to implement that and, and dictate where you want things to show up and, and how to render them if there's, if there's um, any kind of blending or, or uh, filters that you want to apply. Um, so as you can see, it gets pretty, pretty intricate. And then there's also different functions that you have to call to initialize things. Um, and of course, uh, not only for the world environment, setting up things for the world coordinate system, but also for the models and their position. Um, and so there's all of these different functions that are required to set things up just to get things initialized. Um, and then once you have all that stuff set up, then there's different uh, uh, coordinate information for interpretation, conditional calls for the joysticks, if you're using those. Now all this stuff here that you're seeing, this is all um, sort of controlled uh, conditional statements and uh, display statements to throw information up on the screen. So uh, there's that. Um, and then there's um, um, also what they call a callback function. And what that does is it allows information to be manipulated um, in sort of a breakaway kind of uh, uh, interrupt mode or a, um, a subroutine, a separate subroutine that gets called on retraces of the display, which happens 60 times a second or 30 times a second based on your frame rate. And so pretty much 30 to 60 times a second, you can break away and call an interrupt and update and change something, whether it's uh, joystick information or other uh, data, and then have that go and manipulate your, your graphics or anything that you're showing on the screen or sound. And so there's all of these things that have to be taken into account and, and updating. And so um, that's what I had to learn. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but that was pretty elaborate and very complex. And, but I learned it and it's, it's making sense. Still, there's still so many areas that are not, but I, I, again, I'm learning and learning and learning. And so it's, it's really good. And I, I think I'll, I'll eventually get things to a point. Um, so now once I had all that down, then it's the task of transferring that onto the, onto the console. So I wrote a batch file and what that does is it uh, will take the location of your main C file. So I've got a main C here, which is my, my program. And what you do is you take the location of it on your C drive. And then you go to this batch file that I wrote, execute it, and it's this little program. And it's asking for the location of your source code file. So I implement that, paste it in, hit enter, and then what it does is I've set it up to program. It compiles it using the GCC compiler that comes with the, um, well, if you download all the different uh, uh, 64 related files, you'll get a, a, a special GCC compiler for Windows that will interpret your source code file and compile it into a ROM. And so I've set it up and there's different, there's a, a spec file that you use that in conjunction with the compiler that it reads to say, how do you want to compile things? How do you want to create your ROM file? And then it interprets that information that you have within that spec file and then compiles it to your bidding. And so what I did is I set up my, um, I set up my, my, my little batch file here to program it directly to my SD flash. So now once this is done now, so I hit enter and it closes it. So all I have to do now is is open up a uh, I open up my my Windows Explorer and I go to my iDrive, which is the um, pardon me, which is the uh, my little uh, uh, flash unit, and I eject it, and that's it. And then now it's burned or flashed rather over to my little flash reader here, and I've got the SD little guy in there and so that's it there so now I'll throw it into the uh, my beautiful 64 drive and I'll run a test and show you what that does okay so uh, hopefully you can see this so I'm gonna throw the oops got the backwards there throw this guy in and I'll boot it up and hopefully you can see it 
Okay. So I'll go to my dev. Oops. Go to my dev there. Go into the main. Execute it. Wow, this thing's bouncing all over the place. Uh, there we go. Okay. So this is what comes up. So as you can, I'll just sort of show you what I did. So I've got all this telemetry information that's showing, uh, which is all the different uh, X and Y positions of the joystick. I've also got uh, direction of uh, rotation. So I've got a, a button in there that will essentially invert uh, forward or backward rotation for all the different functions that I've been doing based on this model. So I've got rotation angle, and then I've got uh, different rotations, uh, pitch and roll essentially, and all the different coordinate information. So I've managed to get that displayed. And then there's my 3D model that I did, and that was all that vertice data that you saw. So with the controller using different buttons, the joystick start button for reversing, uh, the two A and B button for a pitch and roll, and then I've got my two triggers on the back side to control zooming in and out or just different variations of that. So as you can see, if I start, I can start pushing the zoom in and out, you can see how the model is changing position in a 3D environment. And then it's got the rotation as well. Pitch and roll essentially, right? So I'll change each one. So now I'm holding it. And if I hit the start button, you can see how it changes direction and the direction of rotation changes to negative. So there's different things like that that I'm learning. So the same goes for the pitch and roll, right? Each, each reverse function works for both. And then the zoom function essentially is, is that. Now, the bottom trigger I also implemented with a rotation. So when I pull that, it's actually rotating off screen, but it's because I zoomed in and out there, I can bring it back into view and get it to that point. Now, if I pull the trigger for the rotation, you can see how it's rotating around. Anyway, it's pretty cool, but it's, uh, holy cow, was it ever complicated. And I never really thought that it would be this <laughs> complex. So I'll try and do that. See there, it's getting some weird, uh, that's like dual, that's pitch and roll sort of simultaneously. You get some kind of neat uh, rotations going on. And then what I did is I have, so I'll bring it back into view here. Um, <laughs> it's trying to get it moved around. There we go. Yeah, there. Okay, so it's getting really close. So now, if I got it to there and I move the joystick around, what happens? Oh, it's just. So I can, based on how I move it, I'm just shifting it around in the position, up and down, move it around, right? So that's just sort of controlling its its actual position and all the different coordinate data you got to implement. And these are similar to some of the demos that were out there, uh, the X and Y coordinates as you move the joystick around. And it's moving my model within a 3D environment. Anyway, it's kind of neat, but it's... Uh, Definitely way more complex than I ever, ever imagined. And uh, anyhow. So thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button if you can. It's right there. Yeah, if you do that, it's super appreciated to get the old YouTube algorithm working out. Uh, and uh, for those of you that are interested in sponsoring my channel even further, uh, please check out my page. It's in the uh, description of this video. And it's also in the about section for my channel here behind the code. So thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.